welcome welcome god bless you guys this is brian once more i hope that you have enjoyed these teachings thus far we've already talked about john 14 in two parts john 15 the first part and this is going to be john 15 the second part we're going to go all the way through john 17 because john 14 through 17 are extremely rich in revelation in layers of understanding if if there was only a few chapters in all the bible that you could have that would be more than enough it would be these chapters here all right so let's continue with john 15 and before we do father lord jesus holy spirit we invite you to be with us here make your manifest presence available to us all as we open our hearts to receive from you that you may enlighten our eyes the eyes of our understanding so that we may receive insight knowledge revelation discernment and wisdom from you father in the name of jesus we thank you lord amen all right so we actually ended up at verse 17 so we're just going to go straight uh into the next verse all right so john 15 verse 18 and it says if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love its own yet because you are not of the world but i chose you out of the world therefore the world hates you now just in case there are new believers here or new christians or even some who have not understood this what the lord is speaking of is the world and its system the ways of the world that follow along with the god of this world which is the devil all right and you can find that in the book of corinthians where the lord speaks through paul and he says that satan is the god lowercase g emphasis lowercase g the god of this world okay so when you address god almighty please do not write lowercase g making him equal to the devil that's just something i notice a lot of people do it does matter it should matter to you so when the Lord here says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. The Lord is comforting us in advance because there are many tribulations, many problems, many trials, many circumstances and obstacles that we as God's people are going to face in this world. The Lord Jesus didn't say it was going to be, you know, super easy we're going to have to face these things but these things will help us to die to self to decrease as john the baptist said and for christ in us to increase it'll help form the character of christ within us because when we receive jesus christ as lord and savior we invited him into our hearts and the book of John, sorry, the epistles of John talk about the seed of God having been placed within us, in our hearts. That seed of God is the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, just like this, we became born again. We became a new creation, a creation that has never existed before. You are, you are no longer just a human being descended from the first man, Adam. At the moment of receiving Christ, your spirit is revived. Your spirit is made new. Remember, we are three-part being, spirit, soul, body. And that is the order of of importance. Our spirit is the main thing because... When we become one with the Lord, he who is united with the Lord becomes one spirit with him. All right, I know I'm giving you a lot of uh, words in scripture, but let me turn to that. That way you may know and it helps me remember as well. 
that is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, and it says, But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Okay? 1 Corinthians 6, 17 is what that's what that says. So when our spirit becomes new and born again, we are joined with the Lord. This is why, okay, this is the Holy Spirit. This is our spirit. We are joined. That way, when God Almighty speaks to us, He speaks through the Holy Spirit to our spirit. So when we hear God, it's spiritual. And there are many prophets and apostles nowadays will, will mention that it is not common for God to speak audibly, regularly with His people. There are times when God will speak audibly and it'll appear, it'll seem, and it may very well be an audible voice. But even those whom I have learned from and known have, that have served God for decades, even they have mentioned that it's kind of rare for them to hear God audibly. It's more of one spirit growing with the Lord so much to where you hear him very clearly in your spirit. Okay. Now, why am I saying that? Because when we are born again and our spirit is made alive, we little by little are the part of us that interacts with this world, which is our soul, okay, mind, will, and emotions. That soul is what needs to be saved. Our spirit is already renewed, saved, if you want to say it that way, but it's our soul that needs to be saved. Which is why in Romans 12, 2, the Lord says that be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, your mind is part of your soul. Okay, we need to allow ourselves to be transformed so Christ can be formed in us in a mature way so that his spirit within us will be the one leading and living through us because we're yielding. The part of us that we yield is our soul. We need to yield our mind to the things that God thinks. We need to yield our emotions to the expression that is in line with God's will and character. Okay, we go back to Galatians 5, 22, where it talks about the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, and such those there there that's part of the emotions not all of it but it's part of the emotions and then there is our will the bending of our will where we truly and genuinely say you know we may want to do something but we feel like the lord is saying no don't say that turn left go here don't do that you know little nudges like that we begin to learn the the, the voice of the holy spirit and by yielding and, and not doing what we want to do, but doing what God wants us to do and what he's leading us, we begin to little by little die to self, surrender ourselves, yield to the spirit, not yield to the flesh. Now, the flesh, when we, we say the flesh so easily, right? The fleshly nature. The flesh is not our skin because that wouldn't make any sense, right? The flesh is referred to as the carnal nature. That carnal nature can also be understood as what our soul wants to do. Now, our soul in and of itself wants to do what is not good. And the enemy tries to get attack us in our soul. That's our mind, our emotions. Some people are very emotional, very dramatic, no self-control, etc. And in uh in and and he wants to steer our will so he attacks the mind and the emotions to get us to yield to that so that we carry out things that are wrong do things that are wrong and that's sin the more you do that the harder it is to yield to the spirit because you can't serve two masters so the whole purpose of, of what i'm saying and I, I know i'm breaking a lot down i didn't expect to but the reason I'm saying is because if we can understand how the enemy attacks and how our soul and our spirit functions in this, 
okay now your soul whatever your soul decides to do it will carry out that decision and action through the body remember we said we're spirit soul body we need the soul to yield to the spirit that way the body will yield to the soul which is yielding to the spirit so we will carry out acts of righteousness and we will do things that please god in our bodies which is why the lord speaks about the body is the temple of the holy spirit and he says yield not your members to unrighteousness but yield your members to righteousness this he talks about in romans 6 7 and 8. okay <clears throat> wow okay we got off on that on one verse so the reason i say that is because when you become born again though you are still here like i am in this world you are no longer of the world so jesus was saying here if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you the lord's saying you're in good company son you're in good company my daughter now verse 19 if the world if you were of the world the world would love its own you see you were before you were born again you were of the world but when you became born again you were translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light spiritually speaking you became a new creation and now you are no longer under the genealogy of adam excuse me the first adam when you became born again you were translated to the kingdom of light and you are now in the lineage oh thank you lord in the genealogy of the second adam jesus christ and paul speaks about this in the book of corinthians the second adam so now you are an heir of everything that is of christ your abraham's seed no longer of adam okay so let let us continue wow lord thank you for for all of that revelation i hope you guys if you have comments or whatnot just go ahead and pause the video type up a comment the more the better okay you can share with one another i'm sure this is helping you i, I can feel the the flow of the holy spirit and of course hit subscribe if you're not subscribed that way we can share and fellowship it doesn't hurt you it's gonna take not gonna take a memory in your phone or anything just hit subscribe it would be a blessing and turn on all notifications as well very soon i'm going to be doing contests once again and i'm going to be giving away things and you're going to need to be subscribed so you may as well jump on board now <clears throat> okay let's go oh thank you father let's go to verse 20. remember the word that i said to you a servant is not greater than his master if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. Okay. In other words, the Lord is saying, remember the word that I said to you, a servant, that's you and I, is not greater than his master. The master is Jesus Christ, God. Okay. In other words, he's saying we are not greater, meaning we are not better than the Lord to the point where if the Lord suffered such things we are not better to think that we're not going to suffer such things if he was persecuted we will be persecuted if he was ridiculed we will be ridiculed if he was rejected for speaking the truth we will be rejected for speaking the truth I know I've been through that a lot in different ways as many of you I'm sure have all right <clears throat> verse 21 but all these things they will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me isn't that interesting Jesus is saying these people who will persecute you and I will do these things in his name Meaning they'll do these things in the name of Jesus, in the name of Christ, in the name of the Messiah. But because they are doing these things, persecuting you for following and obeying Jesus, the Lord is saying that they're going to do these things 
foolishly using his name, thinking they're doing him service. Why? Because they have not known God. He just said, because they do not know him who sent me. Who sent Jesus? The Father. Now, this is probably one of the biggest revelations that I have received in, in recent years. And it's the, the difference of knowing about God, knowing the Bible, knowing what you read, surface level understanding, and actually knowing the ways of God. Now, if you remember, in the book of Psalms, I can't remember, it's somewhere in the 70s, 80s, somewhere in there, where the Lord himself says through, through David, I believe, if not, if it, it's a psalmist, where he says that the people of Israel, remember how stubborn they were, they always complained and griped and, you know, were always saying something negative because they were negative Nancys. <laughs> um, they were always complaining. Now, the Lord says in the Psalms that the people of Israel knew his acts, meaning they saw with their own eyes the manifestation of God's power in many ways. They ate manna in the desert for 40 years, supernatural food, bread from heaven, the bread of angels, the Bible says, that would appear daily. They saw the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day, a supernatural fire and cloud, and somehow they got comfortable. That astounds me. It, it absolutely astounds me. And they, they saw his acts, but the Bible says, but Moses knew God's ways. So that should tell you there's a difference between knowing God's acts and knowing his ways, right? And uh, let's see, I thought I was going to find it, but I am not finding it. Um, and because of this, there is a huge, huge difference in knowing about God and knowing God. Okay? And... Okay, that's that. So, what, what happens? A person who knows about God doesn't know Him personally. They read the Bible, I'm a Christian, I go to church, you know, oh, I, I go to church for an hour and I'm paying, doing God's service, you know, very, very religious, very Sadducee-like, very Pharisee-like, very theological. And you ask that person something like, when's the last time God spoke to you? When's the last encounter you've had? You know, when's the last time you experienced a miracle or something like that? They don't know what to say. Or they'll say, God talks to me every day through his word. Okay. Yes, God speaks to us through his word. But that is the baseline. That is the foundation. When you get to know the Lord because you seek Him, then these people who seek Him with all their heart find Him. That is a guarantee because God cannot lie. He says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. All right, and getting another scripture here. There is no way you can seek God with all your heart. Now, I've been on Instagram for almost four years now. Uh, we're in December 2021 for reference. Okay. But on Instagram, I've had so many people say, I've, I saw God and saw God and, and he never answered me or I never found him, etc. Well, there's no easy way to say it. And I'm sure they're just, you know, blockages and trials and, you know, maybe bondage, maybe um, demonic strongholds coming against those people. And there's no easy way to say it. But if you didn't find God, then 
it's it's a hard thing to say, and I'm not judging anyone, but God's word is true. He says you will seek him when you seek him with all your heart. So the only thing I can deduce or I can understand is you didn't seek him with all your heart to the point of willing to give up things you know you shouldn't be doing, uh, friendships you shouldn't have, relationships you shouldn't be in, such things goes in line with seeking God. You can't be, you know, going to the club, drinking, and the next day, you know, oh, I sought God for 15 minutes. I was crying and worshiping. That's great. I'm glad you're worshiping God. I'm glad you're, you know, doing that stuff. But your life is not, sh is not a lifestyle of worship. If you're practicing things you shouldn't be doing, which can very well be hindering God answering you. Okay, because when you really want God, you get rid of things in your life that don't please Him. Wow, I am receiving some revelation right now, even from this. Um, give me a moment, something, some audios issue here. Okay, well, that was interesting. Okay, so only God knows our hearts, obviously. Okay, but speaking from experience, as somebody who sought the Lord, and in my first two years of seeking Him, I was so hungry for God, I ended up with two large black trash bags where I threw away lots of CDs, lots of DVDs, lots of things, that even clothes. Now, I'm not saying here in the present that I agree with what I did, because there are such things as clothes that you know would not have been a big deal. I even threw away a collector set of uh, of things that probably would be worth thousands today. There's nothing I can do about that. It is what it is. But I tell you, in those months that I sought the Lord, I found Him. Not because what I did, but in line with what I did, the Lord allowed Himself to be found because His Word is true. Now the Lord tell the Lord says here in Jeremiah 29 verse 12. And and then you will let let me do from 11 all the way to 14, okay? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Does that sound like a God that wants to just judge you and, and bring disaster upon you? Don't listen to those doom and gloomers. I used to be there until God corrected me. Grace and mercy triumphs over judgment. Verse 12. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all all your heart i will be found by you says the lord well there we go i'm not making this up it's in line with god's word and as holy spirit leads me i'm explaining it so revelation and understanding can come to you and then you take that and you engage with it and you meditate on it and you ponder it and then it will become something you can use in your life, in your walk, in your relationship with God, in order to help you grow and experience breakthrough and growth unto maturity in Christ. Okay? All right. So, yes, there are those who will persecute us as believers. And they'll say they're doing it in the name of the Lord. But they don't realize they don't know God, the Father his ways so it's it's hard i get it i think i um more religious people attack me than than people who don't believe in god than atheists it's the religious people who attack and attack and attack so anyway let's move on we only have a few more verses i oh, thank you lord verse 22 John 15, verse 22. If I had not come and spoken to them, speaking of the persecutors in his time, they wouldn't have no sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me 
hates my father also. Hmm. And if I had done, um, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father, because they're one. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without cause. And that scripture is from Psalm 69, verse 4. All right, last two verses. But when, oh my God, chapter 16 is going to be amazing. But when the Helper comes, that's the Holy Spirit, whom I shall send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you, whoa, you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Wow. Huh, I can feel the, the Holy Spirit getting excited within me as I'm reading about that. So let me jump back real briefly for this last bit. You see where it says, where we read in verse 23, He who hates me hates my father. And then in verse 24, it says in the second part, But now they have seen and hated both me and my Father. You see, treating Jesus a certain way is the way you are treating the Father. And we can cross-reference with a powerful section. This is one of the... This is a chapter that I never forget because I experienced being rejected even by family and so forth, persecuted to where I had to leave my family. in 2003 on Christmas Day I had to leave and the Lord would not let me go back until about three years later and I reunited with my mom at the Lord's command at the Lord's revelation through dreams where he showed me it was time and there's only a handful of family members that I'm reunited with at the moment because he hasn't given me the green light for the others and so um for those of you who, who did not see my, my testimony, my videos, they were on the original channel. Um, unfortunately, I was only, my wife was only able to download two of the four videos, two of the four parts. So again, praying for restoration so that I can get those videos and not lose them. Okay, so let's read over in Matthew 10 briefly, because it's going to go in line with this. With those who reject Jesus, reject the Father. Okay, uh, Matthew 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Interesting there that he says wise as serpents. See, he's, he's given a positive connotation to a serpent, which many of us would think, oh, the serpent that deceived Eve, you know, it's, it's snakes are evil, etc., if you have dreams or visions and you see a snake, you're like, oh, it's automatically evil. Not necessarily. Okay. Here you see the Lord saying, be wise as serpents. So there are times when that symbology may appear in your dreams and such where it's not the enemy. This is why we need to rely on the Holy Spirit to reveal to us. I love talking about dreams, so I thought I'd throw that in there as a little bonus of <laughs> something I've learned. <clears throat> so he says, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, but beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake and as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it will, uh, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Again, the Lord is telling us He will be with us no matter what. And He will guide us if we just pause, rest in Him, yield, and allow Him to come forth. 
Now, uh, verse 21. Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children will, ri will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. How many people? And it's not the people, it's the demons in them or the demons influencing, influencing their ear, their mind to say things. Have you noticed how in movies and shows on the news, people will always, when something's happening, whether they're mad or they want to curse, they always seem to say, Christ or Jesus. But yet they're not religious, they're not believers, or they'll say Jesus Christ, or they'll say, it just seems like that is the name they always want to blaspheme. Now remember, it's not the people, it's the demonic realm. The spirits have you ever I would be shocked to hear a yes to this but I doubt it have you ever in a movie in the, in the news you know in public in real life have you ever heard any person ever say something such as um, taking the name of Buddha in vain Muhammad Krishna all of these fake gods idols worth nothing not the people i'm speaking about the the faith in these creatures and stuff krishna it's some person with i don't know how many arms and all this stuff i'm not insulting the people i'm not insulting those who believe in that i'm just saying notice how the demonic spirits will never speak against those why because they're on the same team hello they're only going to come against what is a threat to them. That's Jesus. They're only going to come against the truth because the demons are in line with the father of lies, who is Satan. Evil will always mock and come against that which is good, righteous, and holy. Jesus. This is why. This is proof. This right here is proof for those who are unbelievers, who are willing and open to what I'm saying now. This is proof of Jesus' authority over all. Christ is the hope of glory, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Savior of all mankind. And Jesus is God. The demon spirits don't waste their time on the others because they are nothing. Anyway, just a little boldness coming forth. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Verse 22. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute, persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher. There we go. Nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. What an honor to be persecuted and come against by others because you love Jesus. And, and I'll give you a little tip for those of you who people are making fun of you because you love Jesus or whatnot. I've had people, Christians, okay, Christians, religious Christians who know about God, but they don't know the Father. They don't know his ways. And they'll say things to me. They'll say, you know, ridiculous things like there are no more prophets. Okay, buddy. There are, there is no more revelation. Everything that, you, that was to be re revealed is here. I'm like, okay, sure. I have scripture for all this because the Holy Spirit quickens me on scripture that, that is proof that they are not um, understanding the word of God and whatnot. But when they say these things, sometimes I've had people tell me, you know, insult me and just say the ugliest things via social media. And um, I just respond something like, praise God, thank you for fulfilling scripture. So when I say that and they read it, they're like, huh? And then I explain to them that the Lord Jesus said that I would be persecuted for his name's sake. Therefore, I rejoice and I bless you and I forgive you. Send. And I post and that's my reply to many. And guess what? Most of them don't reply. And those who do, 
they mock me further and whatever but hey this is a way you can respond so there you go all right so let's finish up here verse 25 it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master if they have called the master of the house beelzebub um which by the way means lord of the flies how much more will they call those of his household therefore do not fear them for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known okay so yeah we will we will leave it at that so there we are we have gone through matthew 15 and coming up soon we'll go we'll jump into sorry john 15. thank you lord that didn't sound right um so we will be picking up on john 16 very soon and john 16 is oh man it's all about the holy spirit Hallelujah. All right, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Again, pause the video, comment on certain parts, because I know I touched on a lot of different things, but I love hearing what you have learned, what God has taught you. Okay, it may have come out of my mouth, but the revelation surely did not come from me. I can do nothing on my own. It's only by the Holy Spirit. And you're going to learn in this next chapter, the Holy Spirit always points to Jesus. Why? <laughs> because Jesus is the door to the Father. He's such a genius, beyond a genius. There's no word to describe our God and how marvelous and wonderful He is. So God bless you guys. Again, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. There are some uh, great things go, uh, coming. And the Lord is dealing with things regarding my original channel. I am waiting patiently, but yet eagerly, because God is going to make his will known very soon. And I am going to continue to speak for him. So God bless you guys in Jesus' name. Merry Christmas once more. Take care.